How's it going, guys? I'm Mike Dwyer from the Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com, and today I want to share a couple tips with you to get your lead guitar sitting right in your mix. So let's take a quick listen to part of this track and specifically pay attention to the lead guitar. So it's sounding pretty good, but that lead guitar is definitely getting lost a little bit. Now, obviously we could just turn the volume up on it, but I don't think that's really gonna solve our problem. But let's try it real quick. So when I turn it up, obviously you can hear it better, but it's no longer really sitting in the mix. It sounds very on top. But with a couple of simple moves, we can get it so you can hear it really clearly without it sitting on top of the mix. Now something to note, if you're actually recording the song, there's a lot you can do to fix this problem in the tracking phase before you ever get to the mix. For instance, you might want to use a different guitar or a different amp or a different cab for your rhythm tracks versus your lead tracks. Or if you only have one guitar and one amp, you can always just tweak the settings on the amp to get a different sound. Or try a different mic or a different mic position. The point is, if you make your lead guitar sound different, it'll be easier for it to stand out against a big wall of rhythm guitar tracks. If the tone is identical, it just makes it a little bit harder to do. But this video is really about mixing, so this will especially come in handy if your tones are really similar between your rhythm and your lead, but it'll still be valuable information even if your guitar tones are different. So let's solo up our lead guitar track and take a look at this EQ. So these two moves here don't really have anything to do with this trick. Here we're just filtering out a tiny bit of fizz at the top end and just adding a tiny bit of brightness. But what we want to focus on is these two moves here. So first we have our high pass. I'm sure a lot of you are already high passing your guitars, but you'll notice that I'm high passing this quite a bit higher than you might expect. On my rhythm guitars, I probably have the high pass set somewhere around 100, give or take. But here, on my lead guitar, I have this all the way up at 225 hertz. So let's pop that in and out so we can hear what it's doing. So you might be thinking, that sounds super thin with that in, and the guitar sounds much fuller and much better without the high pass. And in solo, I would tend to agree with you. But in the context of the mix, all this low end stuff is just getting in the way. This guitar is panned up the center, so it's panned in the same spot as our bass, and our bass has a ton of information down here. And all the beef of our rhythm guitars is right in this area too. So by leaving all this stuff in, it's really just clouding up that area. So how I usually set this is I'll listen in the mix, and I'll start with this pretty low and then just slowly bring it up until I really feel like my lead guitar is getting thin. So yeah, right there sounds good to me. As we went up closer to 250 or 300 hertz, it was just starting to sound a little bit thin. So yeah, right around 225 hertz on this track. Sometimes it'll be a little bit lower, maybe 180 or something, or maybe even a little bit higher. It all depends on the guitar part being played and how it's sitting in the mix. But just don't be afraid to bring this way higher than you expect. So then the other move we're doing here is a nice big four decibel boost at about 1.7K. Let's hear that. So again, you might be thinking that it sounds worse with it in, and it does have a little bit of that kind of uh, telephone sounding effect, but this mid-range bump is really going to help it cut through the other guitars. And again, in context, it's not going to sound so telephony. So let's put this guitar back in the mix, and I'm just going to turn this one band of the EQ on and off. So yeah, with that boost on, it feels like the lead guitar just moved like two feet closer to me. All of a sudden, it's a lot more clear, but it's still sitting in the mix, not on top of it. And be sure to sweep this frequency around a little bit to see where it works best for your track. I find I usually end up boosting somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5k, so in that range is a good starting place. So now the next thing we're going to do is actually on our rhythm guitar track as opposed to our lead guitar. So all I'm doing here is I'm cutting about 3 decibels at around 1.5k on my rhythm guitars. But I have this automated, so it's only turning on while the lead guitar is playing. 
in sections of the song where there's only rhythm guitar, this is bypassed. You could also do this using a dynamic EQ. So the plugin will duck this automatically when the lead guitar is in and you don't have to set the automation yourself. I'll link a video in the top right corner showing you how to do that. But anyway, we just boosted our lead guitar around this frequency. So by cutting a little bit of this on our rhythm guitars, one, it keeps us from just having way too much of that frequency range in our mix overall. And two, it helps to push the rhythm guitars back a little bit to make room for the lead guitar. So let's listen to our guitars and we'll turn this on and off. So hopefully you can hear that with that EQ move in, the lead guitar gets significantly clearer. And let's check that out in the context of the full mix. And let's exaggerate it a little bit. So obviously that was way too far, but I just want to make sure that you could hear how that's clearing up a ton of room for the lead guitar. And then one last final tip here. So far we've been listening to our lead guitar dry, and it could definitely use a little ambience. A lot of people might reach straight for reverb for that, but I found in a lot of cases for lead guitars in dense mixes like this, reverb really just kind of clouds it up more. So instead, I like to use a delay. In this case, I happen to be using Echo Boy Jr. doing a ping pong eighth note. So let's take a quick listen with that. So now the guitar has some nice ambience on it, but again, it's not washy and it's not getting lost. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And be sure to head on over to bettermixes.com to grab a free copy of my Ultimate EQ Cheat Sheet.